Today I want to explore how we create a 3D model from an aerial image, generate a solar radiation map, explore the, uh, the uh, optimum location for solar uh, panels, solar thermal or solar PV, and then place those on the, on the uh, model and generate a percent shadow, a monthly percent shadow and the solar radiation that hits those panels. So the first step is to start with a clear screen. We find our, our image, previously saved into our user folder. We can then um, rescale this image. Um, this was captured in, uh, in Google. And one, when I was in Google, I actually recorded the, the length and breadth of it. And so we use those two numbers to rescale the image so that we're, we're then working on our screen at full size. So just under that tree is the width. Uh, the height point is just up that top left corner. And when I hit OK now, the image is rescaled to the screen, and then I'm ready to digitize at full size. I constrain the angles to multiples of 45 and to um, constrain the lengths to uh, uh, plus or minus 100 mil, and in that way um, makes a uh, nice square job to work with. So as we digitize around here, uh, carefully selecting the corner of the gutters, uh, use the crosshairs to guide you, and uh, you'll get a cleaner job. When you get to the second last or penultimate corner, we right click and then select close square. The software automatically closes out, and uh, then we come up with this option here to define the roof pitch. So the roof model will be constructed using the perimeter and the pitch, but at this stage we don't know the pitch. Now we might just type in a number, but we don't know that number. But we can measure it from a street view image. So when I was in Google, I found our property and captured the street view image, and I can now measure the roof pitch from this street view image. So 18.8, uh, yeah, that's near enough to 19, so I hit OK. 18.8 goes in the box. Let's make it 19. Uh, we're working with the perimeter, so there's no overhang. Uh, the e fight well, we estimated that to be 3200, and we select OK, and then we select Continue, and the roof is built. Looking at the image, we can clearly see that uh, this particular roof has um, Dutch gables on um, each of the hips, so we use our Modify Roof function to turn that hip end into a Dutch gable end. Uh, the same on that one, and the same down here near the chimney. Cool. Uh, we can then look at that in an isometric view. Uh, turn all the planes on so it looks like a roof. And you can see that uh, everything we need to see. So we go back to our um, uh, zoom fit. Go back to our plane. And th the next step would be to uh, in, in, in insert the, um, the, the north. Now, uh, when we capture the image, uh, in Google, the, um, the the up the screen was true north. So when I place my north symbol, I parallel to the edge, and that will be very very close to true north for the purpose of our calculations. So once we've done that, we uh, don't need the image uh, anymore. So uh, we can then uh, turn that off. Uh, we just hide it for now, so we can see what we're dealing with. Well, we've now got a roof, we've now got true north, we can calculate the solar radiation that hits that roof. So we select our radiation button, uh, we select our location from a list of locations. Uh, this list of locations um, can come from various sources. Uh, we use the uh, TMY3 data file format um, from a, a, a data set provided by the uh, NREL, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. So um, Chicago O'Hare is this particular file um, that's automatically found in the TMY3 data set and um, it knows the latitude and longitude and the elevation. Uh, we set a pixel size to get things moving along a bit. We can use a big pixel um, and then once we refine the job we can use smaller pixels. Um, we um, define whether we want a vertical legend or horizontal legend and the time slices that we wish to use. So we're satisfied with all of that. We then select Calculate, and then select the planes upon which we wish to calculate the radiation. If it was a very large job, you might just pick a part of it. So um, say yes to that. The software is, rotates the model to, uh, to north, and then starts calculating the radiation on that roof. So once complete, we rotate the model back to, um, 
back to normal to the screen and we're prompted for the annotation of our legend. We place the legend on screen and, and there we have it. So uh, very quick and very simple. Now in the process of doing that, all the data that relates to the, the radiation that hits each of those areas of the roof has been saved to a text file. And we'll look at that in a moment. But what I'd like to do now is uh, to, to place some objects around this building that would um, potentially impact on the efficiency of our situation. So uh, we'll delete that uh, calculation and uh, perhaps place a, a tree. Uh, there was a tree on our model about there if I remember correctly and we also have a, uh, a chimney that we know the chimney was at this corner here so we'll put the chimney in. Now we can place these things on our model uh, arbitrarily for um, just for uh, illustration purposes but if we want them to be used for calculation then we need to unpack them. So we'll unpack those two fellows and they'll be used for the calculation of radiation and uh, what we'll do now is uh, recalculate the radiation for the same settings but now taking account of the trees and the uh, chimney and you'll see that uh, how that uh, is effect how this affects our roof so uh, yes to that it rotates the job and starts its calculation process and uh, it slows down a little bit here it's doing a little bit more work but you'll see quite clearly the effect of the chimney across here and the tree across there so as it goes through each of the time slices, um, it's writing the data to a text file um, with the azimuth of the sun and the altitude of the sun and for each of the time slices. And uh, it's, it's creating a very, very comprehensive set of data uh, that pertains particularly to this roof in this location. So once it's finished calculating the radiation data, uh, we'll rotate our model back to north, beg your pardon, um, back to uh, normal to the screen, and we'll annotate that once again. And the results will be different because now we have the uh, the effects of the, uh, the the surrounding objects. In this case, the tree and the chimney. Well, this will give us a bit of an idea of um, where we should place our uh, solar array and uh, in fact uh, planning permissions might be such that we, we may or may not be allowed to put it on the front which is the best place uh, we might have to put it elsewhere so what would be a useful thing to do and what we will do right now is to uh, explore the uh, those three options um, and we'll place our solar panels in those locations and recalculate the result so what we'll do next is uh, we'll delete that lot of data because it has been saved away and uh, is available for me to use in my report later so uh, we'll delete all that and recalculate the data with our uh, panels in place so let's put our panels in place uh, we'll select a one and a half kilowatt set we'll put one lot down here and we'll put another lot over here and uh, maybe down the back here will be a good place it's out of the way now we want the uh, so the um, the software to calculate the radiation on those three uh, s systems so we're going to unpack those as well because uh, they could be just for annotation or they could be for calculation so the, the next thing I want to do though is group these things together so that I can get a report that's dealing specifically with the um, with the uh, with the, the array of panels so we'll just change these so they're all grouped together and they will be calculated as one um, then we'll, we'll do the next slot that's uh, these ones here and the next lot will be the ones down the bottom here and we'll change those to group three and they will then be um, combined in the calculation process um, and what I want to do now is just get rid of the other plans that coincidentally have the same number. So we'll, number one, it's not it, that one there, we'll get rid of that one, and uh, we'll get rid of that one. So um, we're now ready to do our calculation. Uh, we select the button, and it's still the same place in Chicago, and uh, using the same um, TMY3 data, and we hit calculate, but now we'll work it out just for our solar arrays and as previously mentioned um, the data is being written to a text file in Excel which is giving me the uh, uh, monthly percent shadow and the, the monthly radiation 
plus the annual radiation and the annual percent shadow. Now we also get a summary of the ambient temperature. Now all this information goes into a simple spreadsheet which can be used later on for analysis of the most uh, uh, useful location for the placement of our arrays. So it's only a few seconds work. Now in this case I'm not going to rotate it back. Uh, this uh, I'd like it to appear on my report uh, basically as it appears. So uh, we'll put our annual radiation there. And, um, and now we know everything about those, um, those three systems. So uh, if I was to then um, annotate those with uh, the group number and the area and the azimuth and the shade um, and say so we'll do this lot. No, not the roof plane, but that. Uh, we'll put the uh, the table there, and uh, we'll just indicate that with a leader line. Uh, we might do this slot over here. No, not the roof. That's one. Yes, and we'll put the, uh, the table there. We'll put that over there, and uh, we might do this slot here as well. So we'll put that lot there, and the leader line straight across to our panel. So um, if we zoom in on that, you will see that uh, we have everything we need to know about that. The, uh, this group number two, um, its uh, approximate area is 10.2 square metres, eight modules with a 19 degree tilt. Uh, blow me down, that's exactly what the roof pitch is. Why? Because we've placed them on the roof. Um, the azimuth is uh, 97 degrees and it has a potential yield of 14 kilowatt hours per square metre. And the average shade uh, for the year is 27%. So useful information and very powerful information now for us to then prepare a detailed proposal for our customer based on real data. But now we're going to look at uh, that data in, in the text file in Excel. So now we'll switch to the to Excel. I'll just flick over to Excel where we've already opened the um, installation summary table. Um, and you can see here we've got a shading analysis for um, our proposed array for each of the arrays and for the whole lot together. Um, and you can see here that uh, the first group, well, it's not looking too good. Um, the second group's not too bad, but the ideal location, which was the one we selected, group three, and it's clearly evident that that's the best um, place to put our array. Um, and this is supported by the output that's generated. And uh, we can see there the um, approximate um, uh, table numbers for that. So all this information allows us to produce a, a much better result uh, for our customer and um, and then uh, a, a detailed report which is not just a bunch of tables and and uh, and dialogue. Um, these illustrations are designed to, uh, to provide a detailed analysis for your customer to help you close sales, to uh, more clearly explain the reasons why you've selected the location and to um, to explore the uh, return on investment for various options. So I hope this was useful and I look forward to chatting to you again real soon. Bye for now.